everyone, it's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. And my guest today is Sheila Desai. Sheila is a writer and a world traveler. She is the founder and owner of a company called Eat Your Heart Out Tours, and she takes people all around the world on travel adventures where they go deep and into the culture and the people of the places they visit. So I'm so happy to have you here, Sheila. Welcome. Excited to be here, Margaret. Thank Good you. to see you again. Thank you. Do you know, I know um, you do some amazing tours. And I'll remind people your website uh, right up front because I won't say Eat Your Heart Out Tours every time. It's E Y H O Tours. <laughs> E Y H O tours, yes. Yeah. Started. Yeah. It was a it was a culinary tour. It was a culinary oh. tour to India that first started this, and and it wasn't a company at that time. Okay. And we kept saying every time we took photographs, group photographs, it was eat your heart out, and so that's how the the, the name came about. No, it's great. It's a fabulous <laughs> name. It's a really unique name. But anyway, yeah. we've been talking about all kinds of things related to travel for mm -hmm. older women, and one thing that comes up a lot in our conversations is traveling solo you know, travel by yourself, but wanting to go to places and really immerse yourself in a location. You know, I mean, we're all doing fast travel, but this is the little slow travel. Mm -hmm. So I know that you've done this, you know, yourself, and I would love your, your thoughts on how to, to sort of travel like a local in a, in a new city um, as a solo female traveler. What are some of the things you could suggest? Right. So the main thing is, um, on, on the one hand, you want to get in uh, to, to a level where you are living as close to a local as possible. On the other hand, you want to stay safe and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So these sometimes can be a little opposing because, you know, it's not your it's not your average um, landscape that you, you've grown up in mm -hmm. and you're comfortable with back home. Uh, but but you are in a place where you want to make maximize the experience mm -hmm. of yeah. living like a local. So I, the first thing I always say is that avoid, um, if you can, avoid all the big box hotels, uh, big box chains, because they're very impersonal mm -hmm. and, and the staff is trained, they're scripted to say a certain thing and, and scripted to, to interact with with uh, with hotel guests in a certain right. way, uh, I I would prefer so much uh, over over all that I would prefer say an Air, Airbnb or a homestay that is has been reviewed well. Uh, always go with one that has been reviewed well, has been you know that that has had some traction, because you you don't end up in somebody's home and and you know you don't know what's happening. So yeah. they, there's your comfort zone there. So first thing is always where you stay because that's going to bring in such uh, it's going to open up these avenues to you that you normally would not know or, or, or go go down into. Um, because the host, the host, the host knows where all the markets are, right? I mean, the yes. persons they know how they live day to day, and that's where you're going to get the immersion into the you know the, right. the meals that people cook and where they go to get certain things, and you know just the little parks and the secret places and uh, the walks right. to take. So yeah, so right. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just um, I know that the times I've stayed in Airbnb. And I, and I, by the way, agree with you. I always stay with a super host, someone that's got that recognition from Airbnb. That means they've had a number of really positive um, reviews over a period of time. But anyway, finding a great yes. place is like number one. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's number one on the list. You also want to maybe learn the language a little bit. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of online resources mm -hmm. now before you go. Really helps. It, it breaks down barriers, brings you that smile. And mm -hmm. people are genuinely, when you when you go to another destination and you start, start pre speaking the language a little bit, uh, even if you're making mistakes, the pronunciation <laughs> isn't right, they really appreciate that you're, mm -hmm. you're making the effort. So, so learn the language a little. Um, I also have... Just to go back on, on the Airbnb uh, uh, point for a minute, uh, the younger generation has uh, has what they call couch surfing, mm -hmm. which means that they there's actually a whole movement out there and they have a site out there where they are, you don't even pay to stay in somebody's home. And, and these are people who just open their homes up and you go in and you connect with them online. Again, they're reviewed and you're reviewed as a couch surfer, whether you're a good guest and you just show up at their house yeah. and... And people are very happy to host you. The, 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 
The thinking behind this is that the people who are hosting you do not have a chance to travel. And so you are actually bringing a, a bit of the world into their mm. lives, yeah. which uh, which is actually a quite powerful idea when you think about it. Yeah, but I think in for for the older generation, we don't quite, we're not quite there, but the Airbnb and the homestays are as close as possible another, to get there. Yeah, another thing, Sheila, there's um, some other ones like, um, I think it's called Freebird in the United Kingdom in England. There's one that's just been started where it's like an Airbnb, but only for older people. So people who oh, are right. over 50, you know, they, the same thing, they just specialize. And also, oh. Thelma and Louise, uh, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's a women's travel site and they've got a, a, ma- a matching uh, roommate service as well. Right. And it's very, it's verified, you know, you have to put your passport and, and driver's license through online so that you're confirmed. And anyway, the point is, there's a lot of people doing this. A lot of others, sharing yeah. now. Yeah. All okay. great. All great. Yeah. So that, that's the, that's one thing. Okay. I'd also say, um, if you really wanted to live like a local and you're traveling solo, uh, find out where you can volunteer. It's mm-hmm. it's it's, it's uh, you know there's always a school or a hospital that you can go into and and say, um, you know the language might be a bit of an issue, but sometimes so many so much is done without mm-hmm. having language because there is a universality there. Everybody needs uh, a compassion. They need you to go and maybe just go and and, and visit a child or bring a little gift uh, in a, in a hospital or or a bookstore, whatever it is, you know. Great idea. Uh, so find find something to 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 really get into volunteer um i would even say uh, you know this is a bit a bit on the extreme side but you know it's, it's possible you'd say uh, if you go into a cafe you can say you know I, i'll wait on on tables for for coffee for a week or something <laughs> you know, and it's a surprise Why not? it's a, a great idea how people will, will come up to you and say, yeah. hey where are you from and you yeah. know it'll, it'll open yeah. up this whole um and, and you really live like a local that is really fun <laughs> And of course, there's meetup groups all over the place in the world yes. too. And if you if you have a specific interest, and, you, and maybe you've gone to a place because they have um, architecture you love, then just mm-hmm. check and see: is there a meetup group in that Lisbon right. or wherever yes. that is focused on architecture? And even if you just go once or twice, um, it's an option. Right, right, and uh, definitely meetup groups are are are, are really great, uh, and and usually they're led by somebody. Who is who has a vested interest to make sure that everybody feels comfortable, included, and and so um, yeah, that's that's really great resource as well. Yeah. I'd say wear the local clothing as well. Try not to stick out too much. Yeah. You know, this is this is an obvious one, obviously, but um, you know, if you're in a, in a in a country that has modest dress norms, uh, the, the, it it just helps. You know, it says yeah. it's it's sending this message. Look, I want to be part of you. I want to be as part of you as possible. Yeah. And yeah. and so that's that's an important one as well. No, that is super important you know as, I, as you were talking I was thinking of some of the other things I've, I've discovered in my travels and in fact mm-hmm. the internet has given us this whole uh, opportunity to explore services that are coming up now there's one I actually used it when I was in Copenhagen um, it's called Viable uh, and mm-hmm. Viable.com is um, an online service where people um, will take you on a tour of the city or they'll take you, for example, I wanted to go to Christiana, which is a kind of a little bit of a scary place. It's a beautiful uh, commune, but, you know, I wasn't sure I would know my way around. And um, this, this guy, he just he put his, you know, for $25, I'll take you an hour around Christiana. And that's how right. he marketed it on Viable. You can do cooking, you know, tours. And then there's others, you know, like just just all over the place where there's a photography one where there, where somebody will come and take your picture for like, a, you know, half an hour and you pay them. Yeah. You know, they're all reputable. As you say, they get they get their uh, ratings and uh, they're, they're safe. But mm-hmm. anyway, so the world is getting very yes. complicated and beautiful. <laughs> and what's possible yeah yeah no it's and and there's just so many so many avenues open yeah. to people who want to live like locals yes, totally. it just means that you can't don't i i wouldn't expect to go to a place like say india for a couple of weeks and then and then just uh, start getting in okay i'm going to live like a local um I, I, it takes a time it takes time so yeah. if you've got time it's on your hands if you've got say like a month and and you really and then base yourself in in one destination not just okay one one day here two days here uh Obviously, if you're going to, if you yeah. if you can, at least like four or five days in one one spot, that would really help. So when you're planning your itinerary, that is that is obviously That's important. You know, really help, yeah. So I mean, obviously, we're talking about this in a very upbeat and fun way, and and people are probably thinking, I would never do that ever. But um, let's talk about safety. I mean, let's talk about a few tips uh, um, that you would advise mm-hmm. from your experience. Uh, what people should consider. 
So um, f- uh, safety while you're traveling as a solo. Um, I think the number one, number one is where you're staying. Again, we, we come back to the, to the, to, to the idea of a homestay or a, or, or an Airbnb because they, there's only, there's only going to be maybe, uh, not more than 10 or 12 people who are actually staying there. So the host actually gets to know you, gets to know about your, your daily movements. Where are you going? What are you thinking of doing today, Margaret? Mm-hmm. Um, or mm-hmm. are you going to the markets? Okay. Are you going to the end of the city? You know, how are you going to get back? Uh, which you're not going to get if yeah. you're staying in a big hotel. Sure. So uh, the host, if, if you can establish that connection with the host and, and let them know, look, I'm going here and I'm, I expect to come back at this time. And and so um, that that would be that would be great. And not only with the host in the Airbnb or the homestay, but set up a timetable for communicating with your loved ones back home. Yeah, very important. And they, should, they should always know that there is somebody who is expecting you at at, at the next stage in your travels. So that's always set up. So when they don't hear from you, so these these are the the main main things. I also have things like I always when I travel when I when I'm getting into a cab, um, you know, I I always in in a in a say if I'm going from one neighborhood to the other and I'm not 100 percent sure of that of that neighborhood, um, I always make a big point, a very ostensible point of actually mm-hmm. photographing the the cabbie's registration number yes. and all that. that yeah. No, you know. Um, um, so, so think like that. Or and, and Uber, for example, even Uber now yeah. has uh, is, is so widespread. So you know, there there has to be that kind of sense of yeah, you know, she she knows what. Uh, more than anything else, I think it's it's that you're projecting confidence. When yes, you project totally. confidence, that is that is one almost like ninety nine percent of your. Yeah your safety is taken care of because it's when you don't project that confidence and you kind of say, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm scared. That is, that's what invites. Um, so you have to think of ways to project that confidence. Um, so, you know, one the thing, other, oh, sorry, yeah, uh, so maybe, maybe you're going to say this too, but one thing I was, I was going to mention as you were saying that was be mm-hmm. sure that you know where you're going um, before you head out because there's nothing uh, more obvious than having someone standing on a street corner with a map or with your iPhone or your phone looking at a map trying to figure out where to go. And I think that's really important. If you, if you feel like you don't know for sure, I always go sit in a Starbucks. I mean, if I can find, I know it sounds so stereotypical, but at least I know there that I can get Wi-Fi and in most places yeah. and just really map out exactly where I'm going before I right. step out on the street. That's a, that's an excellent, yeah. excellent yeah. idea, Margaret. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you could, uh, I mean, besides just staying, standing on a street corner and looking lost, um, <laughs> in a place like India, say, you know, you, you'd get cows coming at you and scooters <laughs> coming at you. <laughs> and, you know, you, you will, you will find, uh, it, it may not be safe from another angle, <laughs> you know, like your physical safety may not be safe. Right? <laughs> this is great. Well, look, I think we've given everybody a really good idea here of how it is to, at least ideas for living like a local if you're a solo traveler the good the bad and the and the wonderful yes. and uh, and i encourage people to go up to your website eyhotours.com and um check out the articles you've written about travel and um just and catch your spirit of adventure thank you yes thank you for having me thank on thank you Mark. so much thank sheila you. okay take care bye-bye if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our 60 and New YouTube channel and also visit our website. We are a strong and dynamic community of women over 60. We're challenging aging stereotypes and every day we share fascinating stories, interesting questions and great conversation.